I'm working in the New Perspectives Microsoft Access 2010 textbook. I'm in Tutorial 4. I'm going to create a form using the form wizard. I have opened my Belmont database. The textbook says to click first on the customer table and then choose Create and use the form wizard. To just demonstrate how this works, I've clicked something else. I'm going ahead and I've gone ahead and clicked on a query. And you see the one that I've chosen is contract list. The reason the book has you click on customer first is it just cuts out a step. So when I start my form wizard, I have contract list showing in my tables queries drop down box. Now I'm going to have to change it by finding customer. If I'd chosen customer first, it would have shown it would show in this drop down box and all the available fields would be ready for me to pull over. But we don't have to select the object first. We can use a drop-down box just like you saw me do there. And I'm going to bring in all of the fields. So I'll hit my double-headed arrow. On page 169, they're now asking me to put the phone field back. So I'm going to put the phone field back. And then I'm going to select email and now add the phone field again. Now what they're trying to point out there is whatever field is selected so I've selected email. When I bring the fields in, that field is going to drop under that particular field. So let's just look at this again. I'll put the phone field back. I'll choose company and then I'll bring the phone field in. It's going to come below company. I'll put it back and I'll choose email again because this is where we want it and it comes in so it's email phone. Let's click next and here I have the option of how I want this form to lay out. Columnar when it's columnar, I'm going to see my labels and my fields. Labels, fields, labels, fields. It's going to go this way. Tabular, you see the labels across the top and the records one after another. So this would be like customer ID, company, first name, last name. Data sheet, it's going to look just like it does when it's in a table with the selection bar over here and the column headers above. Justified uses a lot of graphics, so you're going to have lots of boxes. It would be great for a form that you're going to print a lot, like an invoice. Until you get used to working with forms, leave, stay away from this one. Once you get um, get pretty good at working with forms then you'll be able to create a justified form and manipulate it or modify it to meet your needs. We're going to go with columnar. Next, the name of this particular form is going to be customer data, no spaces. I'll click finish and my form is created. Now we're going to modify this form. If you're going to modify a theme, modify the theme first and then modify your form. So I'm going to go to Layout View. How do I know I'm in Layout View? There's a number of ways. One of the easy ways is you're going to see the orange box. Another way is you're going to see Form Layout Tools. You're going to have the Context Sensitive tab. It's going to say Layout View down here and Layout View will be selected in your lower right hand view bar and also when you look up above in the upper left hand corner you'll see the form view. You toggle between form view and layout view. So form view is showing you're either in design view or layout view and toggle back. So now I'm going to go to theme and I'm going to change this theme to perspective. They're in alphabetical order, so I'm just going to have to come down to where I think the P's may occur. Now this one, the purple, the purple one's pretty easy to pick out, and from past experience, I know the purple one is opulent, and that's an O, so the P's will come close after it. So I'm going to look, and paper, perspective. I'm going to right-click on it and apply the theme to this object only. 
we're applying it to this object only because we don't want to apply it to all the other objects in this particular database because it will change the formatting and all of the modifications that we made before may not work. So by applying this theme, I've not only changed the color, I've changed the font size and the font type. So now I'll start making my modifications. And I'm going to go up, click between the R and the D in Customer Data and add a space. Now the next thing I'm going to do is add a picture. I have the Customer Data label selected. I'm just going to click somewhere down in my detail section first. And I'm going to go to Logo, my desktop, in my Level 1, Tutorial, Landscape, OK. And it puts it inside the title area. Now if I try to move it, I'm going to get some weird things going on here. And now after I try to move it, if I try to remove it from the layout, it may or may not work. So what's happened here, since I tried to move it, actually made the box wider. Now I can fix that simply by resizing the box until I get it down to where I want it. The other thing I could have done was undo it and try it again. So I've added my picture. I'm going to change the color of my title. And I'll do that on the format. And the color that I've been asked to change it to is brown accent 3, darker 25%. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go across and try to find brown. Once I find brown, then I'll look, is it accent 2? No. Brown, accent 3. And then just go down the list. Darker 25% means it's going to be in the middle or towards the bottom. There we have brown, accent 3, darker 25%. And I'll apply that. Next thing I've asked to do is to change the line type. And so I'll select the first one because what we're doing here, we could change all of them at once, but as the book says, you've got your owner, your business owner looking over your shoulder going, well show me what something else looks like. And so you're just going to pick one line type. So I'll pick my one line type here. So I'm going to go to the Format tab. And because my icons, my ribbons don't match the one in the book, I'm going to have to go to Control Formatting and click my More arrow. And I want Shape Outline. And from Shape Outline, What's happened here is it's actually extending off the side of the page. So I'm going to move this slightly as you can, so you can see. Shape outline. And I'm going to go down to line type. And I'm going to choose dots. It's going to put dots around that box. My owner decides he likes that. And so I'm going to go ahead and put those dots around all the rest of the boxes. There's a couple ways to do this. In Layout View, I could select them all one at a time by holding down my Shift key. If you click the top box, hold down your Shift key and click the bottom one, it doesn't do what you expect. You would expect that it would, with the top one and the bottom one selected, it would select all the ones in between. It doesn't work that way. So I have to hold down my Shift key as I I select all of them. The other thing I could do is I could switch to Design View and I could select all of them at one time by clicking outside of one, holding, dragging until I've selected all of them. With them all selected, I'll go to my Format tab, Control Formatting, Shape Outline, and I'll move my box over again. Control Formatting, Shape Outline, line type, and dots, and it'll apply the dots to all of them. And now we'll move back to, and you can see it's applied. So there was two ways to do it. I'm going to go ahead and save this again. And what we looked at here was creating a form, using the form wizard, the order of the fields, changing the title, adding a logo, removing from group, just a number of little formatting things to make this form work better for our customer.